Hi, I'm Katie from Homeschool in the Heat, and today I'm going to be showing you North American birds from Gather Round. I've got several different levels to show you, as well as some of our favorite extras that we used with this unit. I have the pre-reader. Now, this is the earlier version, the older version. There is a new one. Early reader. Early elementary. And then the cursive, which is an add-on. This one does not come with a digital bundle. It's an additional purchase, but it's very inexpensive. I'll also be showing you some of our favorite extras, including read-alouds, field guides, picture books, and a game. One of the really neat things about the Gather Round digital option is that you don't have to print everything. A lot of people like to keep the teacher guide on their laptop or an iPad and either read it from there or screencast it to their TV. If I just click on my laptop here, and I know there's ways to do this on different kinds of computers and devices, but for me, it's as simple as just clicking on that. Now, everything on my screen will be on my TV as well. So as you get into the teacher's guide, it will show you all the different types of pages. Each lesson will start with a notebooking page that's in all the different levels other than pre-reader. Older kids will write out their information. Younger kids can draw or dictate to you. And kids in the middle can do a little bit of both. So that's what we did. They will ask for more specific information on the older child's levels. And then the younger kids, it'll be a little bit more general or broad or just ask what's something that you learned about. There'll be pages about a historical figure or time period, science, of course, the life cycle of the bird, habitats, ecology, grammar pages, social studies. There's definitely lots of mapping as well, which you go over here with the geography, a writing project, copy work with spelling, Bible, and art. So you're going to cover all those different subjects in the unit. There's also a reading list in the teacher guide. Each of the units in Gather Round will have reading lists. These are suggested books. They are not required. You do not have to go buy all these books for the different levels. These are things that if you're looking for a book and you're not sure what your child might like, these are some suggestions. There's some classics. There's some ones that are newer. Um, all sorts of great ones. I will show you some of the books that I purchased to use and that were our favorites. But you can just go to the library and start finding books that are about birds or ask the librarian to help you. So there's also some uh, information here on games like bird bingo, some field guides that you could look for, and I'll show you the ones that we chose. There's a planner in here if you like to do paper planning, or you could probably even put this into Notability or something and type on it. All sorts of ways to take notes. And then you have your table of contents. You can see the different birds that they're going to cover. The bald eagle, hummingbird, black red-winged blackbird, morning dove, robin, owl, raven, starling, Killdeer, House Sparrow, Mallard Duck, Blue Jay, Black Cap Chickadee, American Crow, The Herring Gull, American Goldfinch, Canada Goose, Yellow Bellied Sapsucker, Whooping Crane, and The Trumpeter Swan. And then there's an appendix at the back with maps. We printed those out and put them in my kids' daily binders. I have a video that shows how we put those together for the kids that I will link to. So each lesson will start with information for you to read to your child. If you have really young kids, feel free to summarize this a little bit or maybe read over it first and highlight the facts you think they'll be interested in, what you want them to know, and then maybe skim over the rest of it. For the older kids, you'll definitely want to read all of it. You can take breaks and break it up. There's usually an activity break here of different things you can do. It's generally going to talk to you about the diet. It's going to talk about their habitat, their appearance. It talks about the scientific name, who named them, why they were named that the life cycle, and then it will have references that you can click on if you're using it digitally like this. So I could click on that and bring up the website itself. And I will link to some of our favorite websites that we used as well. Then if you continue down, it will give you a day at a glance. And it's going to explain what the kids are doing in their notebooking pages so you can help them. Then it's going to tell you what they're doing in the other different pages. So this one, they're talking about a famous scientist. It's going to give you the answer key. Obviously, you can see here that there's a lot more on the middle school and high school than there is in the younger levels. Their language arts with the grammar pages. Again, the answers are there. The mapping and what you need as far as supplies-wise. And then the art. 
and what supplies you'll need for that. So everything you need is in this teacher manual. You don't have to go get any extra books if you don't want to. If you're traveling and are looking for something very self-contained, this definitely will meet that need. Also, as you can see, the artwork is just gorgeous. It's beautiful to look at, and I think that really makes an impression on kids. They think that it's important and worthwhile when it's also something pleasing to look at. So seeing the photos and seeing these beautiful drawings really makes an impression on them. Again, that's one of the neat things about screencasting it onto the TV is they can see these pictures while you're reading. There is a new version of the pre-reader. Like I said, this one is the old version and I only printed out the coloring pages because my daughter was only two when we were doing this. So she didn't need the phonics work or anything like that. She just liked to color and have something to do while the big kids were doing school. I did bind all these with disc binding. This is from the Happy Planner discs and the Arc Punch. I'm not thrilled with it. As you can see, the pages tend to come off really easily. That's great if you need to replace something. But when you have little kids handling it a lot, they tend to come out pretty frequently and then they're harder and harder to get back in as they start to get bent up. So that shows you some of the kinds of pages that are in here. Again, you'd want to check out the new version and see what other activities they've added in. But overall, it's a great way for the younger kids to feel involved in school and get a nice gentle start to it. My first grader did the early reader level. And again, you can see it's starting to tear off of the binding. I do have a video on ProClick binding, which is much more durable. And I've also been known to use just regular three ring binders. So he did this in first grade. You can see the gorgeous illustrations. This is the scope and sequence for this level. There's language arts, geography, history, science, social studies, Bible verses, and art. This is not just science, it's not just birds, it's not just ornithology. It covers all your subjects. They're gonna learn about all sorts of different things and they're gonna make connections because they're learning about these topics and these subjects in relation to the birds. So it helps give them a way to store that information. When you make connections, you retain things more easily. There is also a reading log. This comes with multiple pages similar to this. I only printed one. We didn't end up using it. He instead just told me what books he read and I kept a log for him for our records. But I do like the way this lets them draw rather than write to do kind of mini book reports. My older daughter did do some of these. This is a sample lesson. You can see that it starts off with a notebooking page. All the lessons are gonna start with a notebooking page. This one asks them to describe the diet, habitat, and an interesting fact about the bird that they're learning about. They can either draw or they can write or they can dictate to you and you can write it for them. Here they learned about the national emblem of the United States and the great seal and about the symbolism involved in it. So they're touching on civics and social studies and a bit of history as well. Each week you're going to be working on a copy work page and that's going to include spelling instruction as well as handwriting and things like grammar and punctuation. All that's going to be included in the copy work pages. There are a lot of maps in this notebook, lots of map work. My kids really enjoyed that and I think they got a lot more geography knowledge from it because it was related to the birds they were learning about rather than just abstract. We also looked up maps on the Cornell All About Birds page, we could look up maps for each bird to see where they live, where they migrate to, where people have spotted them, and see where we lived was in one of those areas. The art pages in Early Reader are going to be tracing the bird and coloring it in. They can also do a title. So he gave this bird his own name. As you get into the older levels, they're gonna be doing more sketching instead. In history, it's talking about a famous figure, also learning about classification. They're learning how to designate different kinds of geographical features like mountain ranges. Grammar, here they were matching up common nouns and proper nouns and learning the difference and how to designate a proper noun with a capital letter. So they do get grammar. We learned about government and voting. We learned about immigration and how that relates to the word migrate. I think that really does help, again, to make those connections because they're not just learning about it randomly or in a separate textbook, but it all ties in together with the birds that they're learning about. 
they learned about oak trees. This was about different kinds of adjectives that you could use to describe one particular object or noun. It was about export and trade. And then at the very end, they had their final project. So each unit with Gather Round will have some kind of project that spans the entire unit for the four weeks or five weeks that you're doing it. This one was to write a paragraph about your favorite bird. So you work on it throughout the you work on it throughout the weeks until you get to the end. So first they're brainstorming ideas and then they're doing a couple sentences, figuring out what order to put them in, a rough draft, and then the final draft. And he typed it up and illustrated it using Canva. The last level I have to show you is early elementary, although I think I actually have some upper elementary pages perhaps woven in here as well. She was right at the border last year in fourth grade. In fifth grade this year, she's doing upper elementary. But last year we kind of did a little bit of each. This is the early elementary copy work. The nice thing about copy work is that kids are learning grammar and punctuation and mechanics and spelling all in the context of the writing. That way it makes more sense to them. It sticks better than just doing a fill in the blank or a multiple choice worksheet type of thing. So I found it's actually very simple but very effective way of teaching language arts. So she on her notebooking pages, rather than drawing things, mostly wrote things, but she did ask for some help with spelling. We had an app that I use for her so she can look up how to spell words she doesn't know. She also would look in the teacher guide to find more information or in other books like the ones we have there. The page on Carl Linnaeus, rather than having me read it to her, she read a section on her own and then wrote in answers rather than having multiple choice. So as it goes up in difficulty, it's more writing, it's more reading on their own. You can see here that she's sketching the bird rather than just coloring one in. Again, the nice thing about having the digital bundle is that if you have a kid who art is really a struggle for and they don't want to sketch and they hate it, you could go ahead and put a lower level where they could color it in, you can mix and match. For example, we were learning how to do watercolors. So I printed from the pre-reader one for her to paint rather than having to have her sketch it again. She'd already sketched the bird, but this way she had one to paint with her siblings. This unit also has them reading fables. And again, it'll be a little bit more involved for the older kids, a little bit less so for the younger kids. This one was the ant and the dove. They would read the fable and then answer reading comprehension questions. This one, she is circling multiple choice. If you go up to upper elementary, they'd be writing out answers. You can see here that the copy work gets more advanced as you go on. There are spelling and grammar focuses at the bottom, not just copying the verse. They're circling things, finding the more difficult words. And then at the end of the week or two weeks, they will be doing a dictation lesson where you read the verse to them and they write it down, or you could have them memorize it and write it from memory. This was a grammar page where they are circling the nouns, particularly the proper nouns here again with the tricky words to help them with the spelling. They get to pick which words are hard for them and write them down and focus on those rather than having a set of words that may or may not be what they need to focus on. This is the start of her writing project. She's chosen a topic and written out some ideas that she will incorporate into her paragraph later. Here they learned about the Olympics. That was fun. We learned about dialects and languages. That was fascinating. I didn't know some of this. This is her rough draft of her paragraph. When we learned about crows, we did a family tree. We also worked on finding different ways to describe something and used a thesaurus. Learned about homographs, trade and export, Bible verses, leaf rubbings, types of trees. We went around the neighborhood and found what kind of trees we have in our neighborhood and did leaf rubbings of them. Here's her reading log. I didn't have her do this for all the books she read. I just had her pick one or two. And then at the end, there's also a bird watching log. She sketched these. These are birds that we saw. Whereas my son, an early reader, he doesn't like to sketch. So I went ahead and let him cut out ones that I had found online and color them in instead. So it's really very flexible. Finally, I have the cursive here. I did not print out every page because she was doing handwriting in the copywork section, working on her print as well. But we did this on days where she wasn't doing as much copy work. This is the very first cursive book that they put out. There is one page for every lesson and the bird at the bottom will match the lesson. They can color that if they like to color. It starts off with letters and then moves into words as they get further into the cursive program with Gather Round. There are extra pages that I didn't print out. So this is not all you get. This is just all we were using. Now for fun extras, one of our favorites was this bird bingo. 
it isn't just North American birds, it's birds of the world. The illustrations are gorgeous. And then there's also a little booklet in here that gives you facts and information about each bird. Another fun thing, we found these stuffed animal birds and ordered a few of them. Not, I wouldn't go and get 20 of them. They, that would get expensive. But we ordered some. And the neat thing is they have a squeeze box in there so that they make the accurate call for each bird. For a read aloud, this is what I highly recommend. In fact, if you got nothing else to go with this unit, absolutely nothing else, this is what you should get. The Burgess Bird Book for Children is an amazing and older read aloud. The illustrations are not much. They're all black and white in my copy. But we did look up the birds using a field guide as we read each chapter. The stories are really interesting for the kids. They are very detailed and they have great moral lessons as well. The kids really loved it and so did I. You're also gonna want some field guides if you were doing this because once your kids start learning about the birds, every time they see one outside, they're gonna wonder what it is, if it's one they've already learned about, and you're gonna to wanna to know too. And if you're like me, you're not gonna know just off the top of your head. I like this field guide. It was just for our state, and I'm sure there's one for every state. But one of the neat things about it is it is organized by color. So it has this little tab at the top corner. So if you're looking for, hey, I saw a bird and it was blue, you go to the blue section. And then within that section, they're going to be organized by smallest to biggest. So you can easily flip through and find the bird. This one is for the entire eastern region. It gives a little bit more information about each bird. And they're going to be organized by bird family rather than by color. And then if you have younger kids, something like this, the Kids Guide 2. And this one's Birds of Florida, but again, I'm sure there are ones for lots of different places. And it's a little bit less information, but it's something they can read on their own. So my kids really like being able to flip through this on their own and find out more about the birds in our area. The pictures are also really nice and big and that helped them. And they got really good at identifying birds using this. This was the other book that got a lot of use in my house. It's the National Geographic Kids series, The Little Kids First Big Book of Birds. This is not just for little kids though. My older one liked it too. I found her flipping through this one all the time. It had great diagrams in it, very colorful. Not intimidating if you have a kid who's not a big reader. There's not a ton of text on each page. All the pictures make it super interesting. They can read it in small chunks. So that's a great one. And these come in different topics too. So we also have the one that is for space. When we did the space unit, there's an oceans one, etc. This was another big hit. These are press out flying birds. So they're like paper airplanes. You press them out on the perforated lines, just punch them out. And then there's directions on how to fold them. You'll need a little bit of tape for some of them. You might have to weight some of them with like a coin, but they fly really well. My kids have had a lot of fun with this so far. We still have more to do. And then there's little facts about each bird as well. So it actually looks like the bird that it's supposed to be. It is accurate and then it has some information. So that was a fun thing to do with dad in the evenings or on the weekends after learning about birds with mom. The other thing I suggest is getting a bird feeder and putting it somewhere where your kids can see it. We put ours right here outside our kitchen window so the kids could watch, heck I could watch. Every day during breakfast, we'd see what birds showed up. Excuse my dirty windows, the sprinklers hit right here and leave hard water marks that don't really come off. And then we also had a butterfly garden there so we could watch the birds and the butterflies every morning while we were doing our read aloud and having breakfast. So that's Gather Round North American Birds. It's my favorite unit study. It's the one that had me fall in love with Gather Round. It really got our family working together and learning together. I didn't know a lot of the stuff about those birds or about the North American Migratory Treaty Act and different things like that. So my kids got to see me learning as well and me getting excited about it. They helped me put up a bird feeder outside our kitchen window. So we saw birds while we were eating breakfast and I'm looking them up just like they are. They learned that learning isn't something that happens during the school day and just until you graduate, and then you can be done with it. They saw that adults are learning too. It was hands-on in that we had bird feeders, we used bird seed to make crafts, we went on field trips, and it just really ignited a love of learning in my family, and I hope that it will in yours too. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below, and as always, I'd love for you to subscribe. Mm -hmm.